Okay, everybody, this is organic, right? That's where you need to be. Why oh, should be screaming towards the door? Um, okay, I'm Dr. Nichols, and what we're going to do today is I'm going to kind of go over the different, the format of the class, a little bit of syllabus, well, a lot of it, a lot of syllabus, and then the resources that we're going to use so that you have those. Um, so that I kind of introduce them to you, and then also on Friday we will start going through the through the topics on this list. So I gave you a printout of the day by day schedule. This is also in Canvas, which I'll show you. And so, for instance, on Friday we're going to go over, or we're going to talk about, or we're going to do problems on material from 1.1 to 1.2.2.e. So the format of the class is going to be a flipped kind of lecture, meaning that I will ask you to read in the textbook. There are going to be video resources available both in the textbook and outside of the textbook for you to look at that material. There are going to be problems within the Top Hat textbook that I'm going to ask you to do before you come to class. And then we'll start class with me answering any questions that you might have as well as then we'll do some problems or if I spend the entire time answering questions that's fine but but also we'll do problems a lot of a lot of which will be in a group setting although this isn't the ideal room for that but we'll make it work um, so first things first so in canvas you will see a link to the Piazza discussion board which I'll talk about in a minute and then a link to my appointment calendar. So if you want to make an appointment with me, you can go ahead and click on that link. That will take you to my appointment calendar. And basically everything that grayed out is grayed out. I'm not available for some reason. But you could go ahead and click on one of the um, one of the green boxes, and it will um, let you make an appointment in 15 minute increments. What will happen is it'll send you an email confirming that it'll put it on my schedule and then I'll know somebody's coming. Okay, it'll send you a reminder like an hour before. It goes later into the day, so if, if it's there, you can go ahead and click on it. If you click on it like at 6 o'clock at night, I may or may not see it by the time you get there, but usually that happens like 7.30 or something like that. Like I said, right now, if there's a green... Well, we might have to trim off some of the end of the day stuff. But right now, if it's there, you can go ahead and click on it. If none of this works, email me and we can set up a time. So basically, that means anytime there's green available, that's an office hour. So that, um, that's how you can make an appointment. Also, in the Canvas site, there is how to purchase the Top Hat textbook. Um, it has the co it has the organic lab book code in it, which is listed there, and you'll need that in order to get access. It's four one two zero zero two. I'm not quite sure what the classroom code is for this. If you bought it through the bookstore, um, I suggested an email that you can go to the you can go to the Top Hat um, Service Center, and they are pretty good about answering your questions, and if not real time, very quickly. So if you go to the help links with frequently asked questions, you'll see there's a Top Hat Student Help Center, and they suggest get asking them the question. So there's two codes apparently you need when you buy something from the bookstore. I didn't know what the second code was. Maybe it's the 412002 code. There is only one organic class, so you guys, so the morning and afternoon classes are all together. That way I only have to update stuff once. So I didn't ask them to create two sections. Um, just so you, well, we'll talk about the Top Hat um, book in a minute. So as far as the syllabus goes, my contact information is here. So my office is the chemistry main office, which is 
W301. I'm in the back. If Mrs. Yan is there, um, just, you know, you could say you have an appointment or I want to ask me a question. If she's not there, there's a sign that says ring the bell and come back. If you just stand at the desk, probably nobody's going to come out and help you. So you'll just be standing there. Although I do have a camera for that, so I can kind of see when people are standing there, if I'm at my desk and if the camera's on. Otherwise, you just stand there. Um, so yeah, kind of have to come back. Um, so my email is there. I'm usually pretty good about getting back to you an email within the day. If you email me after 10, don't expect anything until the morning. And I've kind of put that there. If it's really important, put important, time sensitive, urgent, help, whatever, so that I know it's, that I need to get to it right away when I see it. And my office hours are there, but again, with the, with the scheduler, it's, you can have virtual office hours. Um, or office hours virtually anytime you can get a block. And this is the, this is the wrong syllabus. We are in here. From 1 to 150. Okay, what is organic chemistry? It's going to be the study of carbon compounds. It's an entire year course. Um, and by car carbon compounds, we break those up into different um, what are called functional groups, which are organizations of carbon and other elements. And those functional groups, then we take one at a time. First semester, we'll be taking alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Alkanes are carbon hydrogen molecules with all single bonds. Alkenes, carbon hydrogen with a double bond. Alkynes, carbon hydrogen with a triple bond. And then next semester we'll do alcohols, which is a carbon and an OH, and carbonyls, which is a C double bond O, and aromatic compounds, which is a six membered ring with double bonds alternating. So we take all organic books that have been successful take organic chemistry by a functional group approach. People that have tried to do otherwise, usually their book ends up gone because nobody buys it. So Top Hat is organized that way. If you want a hard copy of a textbook, you can get any organic textbook. They're all virtually identical. The Wade book is sort of the format I'm following. And so any of the Wade books, the newest Wade book is like, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars, up to three brand new. Um, but you can get like the seventh edition for a fraction of that point. And you could get it at, you know, half price books or online if you wanna if you want a hard copy to, to work from. You will keep access to the top hat book as long as they're in business. And they they supply electronic books to Ohio State and a bunch of big schools, so I don't see them going out of business in the near future. Um, so most textbooks, electronic books, are only for like a year or four years. This one is as long as they're there, so you'll keep a copy of it. Anything I edit the book with will stay with it, including future edits. So what I'll be doing is probably embedding some of my videos within it, which will link off to YouTube, and you'll be able to um, you'll be able to see those. And in the first couple chapters, I've already done that. I can also edit the book. I can leave notes as to this is an important section. This one kind of skimmed through. And I'll show you an example of that with the Top Hat book. So the topics that we're going to do by functional group is we're going to learn how to name them, physical and structural properties, how to make that functional group, by reactions and how to react that functional group to make other functional groups. That's the essence of organic chemistry. You change one functional group into another. And so we'll learn those reactions and the specifics that go with that. Um, also the specifics include step by step the mechanisms, how this occurs. So we'll spend some time on that, um, probably more towards the second half of the semester. We're going to do alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes because there's a lot of stuff that goes with alkanes structurally as well as their stereochemistry, and so there's a bunch of those. So we're going to cover chapters 1 through 13 and chapter 18. 
of the Top Hat book. Chapter 18 is kind of out of place. Um, and so that's all listed in this day-by-day to -day topic listing. Um, so the course goals are kind of listed as well as the learning outcomes. It seems like there's a lot of those, but we have a lot of disparate kind of topics that we're weaving together this semester. And then it'll pretty much be learn how to make the functional group, learn how to react the functional group, and the mechanisms for those reactions. Those will be the big three things for that for next semester. Um, so let's talk a little bit about assessment. So in the educational world, there is formative and summative assessments. Formatives are low stakes assessment that there's a lot of. And those are going to be the online questions that you're going to do for each class period. I may, and I will give you some practice problems that you'll do um, sort of as a graded take home quiz or graded practice problems that you'll turn in that I will quickly grade, quickly grade. Those are low stakes things. Now, my job in assessment is to look at the class overall. So if a, cu a question comes back like 50% correct, that means I need to probably spend some time talking about that question. Your interest is you. So if you look at a problem, it's like, I don't know where to start. Or, you know, I tried all the answers and I finally got the right one when there was only one left. That might be a question you want to ask and go, and we can go over it in class. You can come and, to my office and ask. So what you want to do is with this formative assessment, it helps you know, it helps you learn what you don't know. Okay. And then the summative assessments hopefully are the higher stakes exams. And so hopefully you've made all your mistakes by in the formative assessments before you move to the exams. Um, I, I usually, you know, during new student orientation, and some of you may have been at the new student orientation I did, um, I talk about, you know, the idea of if you want to be good at anything, you need practice, right? You want to be, a, you want to cook, you need practice. You want to play an instrument, you need practice. You want to do a sport, you need practice. And, you know, it's usually if you need 50, 50 times of practice, then let's get through the first 49 so I can finally not suck at this, right? Because that's what's going to happen. So practice is going to be important in learning organic, doing problems, you also need to understand a little bit of theory, right? I mean, if you're gonna be a cook, you need to know a little bit about what goes where, right? It's not just throwing stuff together. So you need to know a little bit of theory as well. So that's the best analogy I can beg, is the formative assessments are gonna be the practice and then summative assessments will be the game. Okay, so if you wanna go into the game with no practice, God help you. But most people, we don't want to do that, right? We want to. So that's why it's set up that way. So the online quiz questions um, and the graded practice problems will provide those, those practice problems for you. And I'll be looking at, it, at the overall class um, to see if there's stuff that obviously, obviously this, didn't, this didn't go over. So let me try and explain it in a different way or explain it again. Okay. And... Your job is to ask questions. My job is to answer questions. Okay, so don't feel like you're putting me out if you're at, if you're asking me questions. That's part of what I get paid to do. And it's probably the most pleasant thing of stuff I do since I'm chair. And the days when I just could answer questions are long gone and a pale memory. So, so don't feel like you're imposing. And I'll, and for those of you who are like, oh, I'm a little shy asking questions, I may have a solution for that, which we'll talk about. So we're going to assess these by these different things. There's four major exams, three in season, one final exam. And then there'll be a multiple choice, the multiple choice, yes, there should be three major exams. Um, I took this from the summer syllabus. So three major exams plus the final exam. Final exam will be comprehensive. It'll be the only multiple choice exam. Everything else will be written. There are old copies of, of the older exams online, and I'll show you where those are at. Um, next semester, it will be totally comprehensive in Organic 2 
and it will be an ACS exam. And so there's study guides in the library and we're a long ways away from that. So as we get closer, we'll talk more about that. So what are we gonna do for the lecture period? Okay. So the way the lecture, the way the, this class is gonna be structured is this. I am going to ask you to look at the material that is in the reading assignment. So for Friday, it's 1.1 to 1.2.2.8. I've only said that five times today. So that's the only reason I remember it. We're gonna talk about that on Friday. So what you're gonna do before Friday is you're gonna do a combination of things. You can go ahead and read the textbook with those sections. There are going to be videos within the textbook as well as links to videos for outside of the um, textbook. I have, I had a, I used a flipped class with just videos prior to last year. And then I got freaked out because students were telling me that they were watching it at one and a half and two times the speed, which really means that it was a checkbox. It wasn't a, let's take copious notes when I sound like a chipmunk. That doesn't work very well. So I got a little freaked out by that last year, and so we're going back to more of a flipped lecture. But you'll have a lot of, you know, not only just reading the book, but also then using videos. So for Friday, you'll see here's the reading assignment. It's the same thing that's here. Then there's going to be, there's a little video on refreshing on Lewis dot structures. There's a video on Vesper theory as well as hybridization. Um, and then there's some PowerPoint notes that probably go with that. There'll be some problems that we'll do in class. Those I have, those I can see, you can't right now. Um, whenever I, there are problems though, there'll always be an answer key that you can get after class. That will, and it's, much of it's narrated so that you can basically listen to me talk you through the problems. So that's the material for Friday. Then you're going to go to the Top Hat book and chapter one. And we'll go full screen. Because full screen I've got, we can go into the introduction. You'll notice in the first two chapters, which I annotated last year, and then I never got beyond chapter two. So I gotta work on that for this year. Um, so this is an important topic, atomic orbitals, remembering the shapes of the S and the P and the D. Um, much of like Schrodinger equation, great, but not necessarily that important. Um, so you can kind of read through this, then eventually you'll get to a question. Oh, and there's videos in here from both the publisher. So there's a video there on, you know, how you determine S, P, D orbitals from the electronic configurations. And then you'll get to question number one that says match the atom with the electronic configuration. And so I can't answer those questions, but you can. So you're gonna go ahead and match them up. These questions I'm grading on participation. You have unlimited tries and they're graded on participation, the fact that you tried them now. Remember that the idea of these questions is for you to figure out what you don't know. So if you're just gonna randomly like click A, B, C, D, done with that, move on to the next problem, you're shortchanging yourself. Nothing I can do to stop you from doing that. But is that really practice, right? Going to the batting cage and just swinging the bat aimlessly is not practice, right? So, and this is where you know, as you're going through these or as you're going through the reading, you might have questions. In the past, students have said, well, if I have these questions, you know, how am I supposed to ask them? Well, my usual thing was write them down and then when we come to class, then I'll start by class by saying, any questions? And then we all just stare at each other awkwardly, depending on how long I wanna do that. I don't have very long attention span, so I'm not gonna sit here for 10 minutes and do that. Um, so then I tried three by five cards, write out your three by five cards, sneak it up here before I get here so that then I don't know it's you if you have a fear of asking questions. And that worked okay. 
for a while. Sometimes I was overwhelmed with questions, which is perfectly fine. I will spend an entire period answering questions if that's what you need. But we'll also be doing problems if there are no questions. So then over the summertime, I was approached by this company, Piazza, which you've gotten a couple of emails on. So in the Piazza, the Piazza is a discussion board. You could say Canvas has a discussion board. True. Um, Canvas's discussion board, I do not believe I can make totally anonymous. Meaning that when you post something to Canvas, to Canvas's discussion board, everybody sees it and they know who you are. This is anonymous. So if you post a question, other students in both classes will not see who you are. Okay. So it's, it's anonymous from that standpoint. Now, will I see who you are? Yes. Will I know who you are in the first couple weeks of classes? Maybe. But I'm going to be I'm so exhausted and short for time that I don't really have a lot of time to judge. I know we're always being judged. Well, consider this a judgment-free zone. In other words, if you ask the question, um, unless somebody goes online and says, that's a really stupid question, which they will only do once, okay? And then there will be a voice in the discussion board that says, this is not appropriate, right? So if somebody, if you have a question, you can write it there. You guys can answer each, own, uh, each other's questions. I can jump in and answer the question. If you had the same question, you could endorse it so that like one question may be endorsed 10 times, which I'm assuming means that at least 10 people had that same question. And so then I can start with it in class. If it's something that people are constantly asking about, I might say, okay, here's the answer. You know, here's, or here's how to think about it. So I can jump in and I can, I can say, that, that's a good question. Maybe you should look here. I'll try not necessarily to answer the question directly, but give, you know, but give some guidance in that. And then in class, we can talk more about that. So you can't see who's, you can't see your peers. Um, like I said, I can, but this is not a graded thing. You can participate as much or as little as you want. If you just want to stalk from the outside and see all the questions and never participate, you can do that. Okay. Um, but there's, uh, there's enough educational research that says that people are sometimes shy in asking questions because they don't want to, you know, they don't want to look dumb. They don't, they don't want to ask a quote unquote dumb question, which there is no such thing because if you have that question, I guarantee you five other people have that same question. And sometimes stuff is, is really complicated. So I know kind of what questions you're going to ask ahead of time. So this is a place, I guess, I don't like this phrase, but this is a safe space where you can ask, you know, questions and hopefully it'll be judgment free. It will be from my point, from my end. Okay. And I could make it completely and totally anonymous, but the company doesn't recommend that because then apparently I lose control of some things that I need control of. Okay. So the idea is you can do that, and there's lots of, I think somebody polled their students, one in an engineering class that was using this, and there were some students that said, oh, I would never post if I couldn't do it anonymously. We can do it anonymously. So you can use this as much, it'll, it'll evolve as we use it. If, it. if I find it's really, really helpful, and you find it's really helpful, then we'll expand it into lab, and we'll put all four of the lab sections into that and then we'll give TAs access so they can jump in with the answers but first I got to figure out exactly how it works so like if you for instance asked me if you posted something where does it go so so somebody posts something after class so that I can figure out where it went and if you haven't signed up for this yet um, I will send one more link after class and you can go ahead and just sign up for it. It's free. I, I don't quite know how they make their money. 
I think they have a career site on this. So that has to go through legal and all that before I can integrate this into Canvas. The lawyers have to be involved, and that's not happening this semester. So maybe my ne next semester will be out there for, for a lot more classes to use. But I was impressed with, uh, with some of the studies that, that people have done in terms of being able to ask questions anonymously. Okay. So if you're a little shy about that, this is the perfect environment to break that shyness. And if you see a question, hey, I had that same question, then I think you just, you can endorse it um, as well. So we will figure out exactly how this works. Because right now, I told the morning class to send me something. I have no idea where, where it is right at the moment. So we'll find that out. So you guys send me stuff and we'll figure out where it is, even if I had to call the company and they got to walk me through it again. Okay, so I'm sorry this is kind of a standalone thing, but maybe in the future it'll be integrated with Canvas, but there was just not enough time and a lot of paperwork and hurdles to get that to happen. Um, there's some people that are pretty excited about potentially using this at the university. So that's a place where you can ask questions. Now, if it's a, you know, if it's a complicated question and I need to answer by video, what I will do is I will actually write out a video and I'll probably post it either a link to it to YouTube or a link in the I hate to do this but the discussion board in Canvas which is a second different discussion board so I have the ability to write out answers you'll see I write on the I, I write on my computer and it shows up on the screen during class I'm record I will record what I lecture on in class so that it'll be posted after class so you can go back and review it and you can see the notes, okay? Um, that's, that's how I've done things for probably 10 years. So I, but I can very easily whip out an answer and then post it um, wherever it needs to be posted. If it goes up on YouTube, it goes up as a public file. So then people from other schools are asking me questions. I don't get paid to teach them. <laughs> Somebody said, can you post the other two? The other two videos for your lab and I don't know if they're in this lab or not so it's like well if you're not in John Carroll's lab then no <laughs> but if you're in John Carroll's lab the videos are in canvas so I, occasionally somebody will do that it's not monetized you can't monetize an academic videos which means they're probably hopefully they'll kick me out um, so so that's one way to ask questions. And if I have a screen open during class, you could pull out your phone and quickly type in a question as well, and then I would see it. And we all know how to sneak the phone around so I can't see it, right? So I don't know who sent me the, sent me the email. I do not flip out over phones in class. I do get annoyed if you're like sitting in the front row and I'm writing stuff and you're on your phone, not doing anything. It annoys me. If I'm in a bad mood, I might make a snarky comment, but there's other departments where the faculty just flip out. I, I, I'm too tired for that. <laughs> so, can I see when you're using your phone? Probably, but, but you, could, you could very easily ask questions during class. Now, we're gonna be working in groups. I'm gonna try and randomize groups every time so that we kind of go back and forth, like I said, with this, we're gonna probably have to move chairs and then move them back, but that'll be okay. Um, if we don't work in groups, then you'll be talking to the persons next to you. Um, I have whiteboards, I have little tiny whiteboards. So if I ask you to draw out a structure, everybody will get a whiteboard and draw out the structure and then hold it up. And then I'll kind of look at it and go, okay, that doesn't mean yes or no, that just means, okay, I see your structure. And then I may put it up here and then we would vote, then we may vote on the answers. So you do have the capability in the classroom, uh, the top hat classroom, but by the time everybody gets their phones out and tries to draw with their fingers and stuff, it's just easier to draw on these whiteboards. So we'll get to that, we'll get to that. And if we're working in groups, we'll have a discussion. I'll tell you why working in groups is important, can be important. Okay, so that's, that's the Piazza tool, um, and I, they've been out. I just got an email from them over the summertime. I talked to them. 
I was kind of impressed with with the fact that they did have some evidence that that this would help increase student engagement. And at a big school where somebody has like 250 students, you never get faculty member office hours. You will get that. But these can be an extension of that. So you can ask questions and students can feel free to answer something. If it's like way off, I might I might jump in and go, well, let's not think about it. I'll try and be positive. Let's not think about it that way. Maybe we need to look at it this way. Okay. So the one rule is no flaming anybody if that's still a phrase. <laughs> right. We want to treat everybody with dignity and respect. Even if it is a dumb question. But there is no dumb question, so nobody's going to be asking those. Sometimes I do I do that in class, I will say. Somebody will say, I'll say that's a dumb question, but it's just a joke. I won't do that because then people take it personally. So for Friday, you're going to go through and answer these questions. Um, again, if something comes up in the reading, or you might say, hey, is this, should I really focus on the Schrodinger equation? Then I'm going to probably email back and say, or put on the thing, no. That the Schrodinger equation isn't really important at this point. Okay, and if I was if I went through the book, I could say that, um, and maybe I'll get a chance to do that. So we go through the different things. The what's important about valence bond theory? The octet rule. <coughs> Lewis dot structure is an important topic to master. You can get my powerpoints here, and there is a link to the video. The video, the video, there's my video. So there's a link to the video if you want a refresher on formal charges, Lewis dot structures. This is actually the same link as what was in Canvas. So I'm going to try and migrate all those over into the book, um, but it's going to take me a little bit of time. This is their video on how to write the Lewis dot structure for sulfuric acid. So if you need to see thing in more than, things in more than one way, you have that capability here. Like I said, I have the ability to edit this book. And that's what I do when, I'm, when I'll add things to it. And then those edits stay in there for as long as I don't change it. So, and people who have access to this book also then get the newest edition online. <coughs> okay, so you're going you're gonna to read those. If you have any questions, we will go over those. I will look at the problems. You can always ask, say, how about problem uh, four? I had difficulties with problem four, and I'll, we'll go over it. Okay? So like I said, as much of the class period as we need about problems, and I can sometimes anticipate the difficult topics that people are going to have, but I want to use the class time to talk about the difficult topics versus the topics that everybody, can, everybody gets. So that's the idea of the flipped, of a flipped classroom. This is just has a little bit more technology in it. If you take a history class and they say, read chapters two and three and we're going to discuss them, they flip the classroom, right? Because you're reading and then discussing. In science, the difficulty is that science textbooks are sometimes hard to read. That's why there's this other stuff in there. Okay, um, so that is the top hat textbook. And if you don't have access to this, you can get access online and then just pay for it. If the bookstore has like not gotten back to you, I go to the bookstore and cancel it and just buy it online. Unless there's no, unless you can't do that. Um, but they knew we were using this so long ago, so I don't know why they don't, they're not stocked. So all of the problems that we have to do will be on topics. Yes. Like yes. So in other words, the problems that are in 1.1 to 1.2.2.2.e .E are the problems that'll be due for Friday. And I can pull it up and I can see what problems people had difficulties with. Okay. Um, I probably won't give you the full participation points until the end of the chapter. Okay. But I'll be looking at I'll be looking at them. So if you have a day when you get a little bit behind, get caught up because at the end of the chapter, that's when I'll go through and I'll and I'll put the grade the participation grades in the in the um, gradebook on Canvas. Okay. 
Um, so that's for Friday. Now, what else? So that's kind of what we have available there. Um, going back to the syllabus, just quickly. Um, so we're going to have three exams. So we're going to have three exams and the final exam. We will also then, those, per, those percentages are... Lay, the exam dates are laid out here. I've decided to schedule exams for Monday. We'll have a review session before each one of those review class period on the Friday before that. Um, if you have to miss, an, if you know ahead of time you have to miss an exam, talk to me. We'll figure something out. So the top hat book is required. Um, any, I would, I would th way to follow this um, nicely. But even the sixth edition, which, you know, if it was garage sale season, you can find one of those sometimes out there. Um, then the molecular models. So molecular models are a little like tinker toy models, although there is some stuff on the computer and there is some stuff on the iPad that an, another company I've talked to um, has where you can sort of draw the models in a pseudo virtual reality. Um, we're working on that here as well, so um, I have to talk to them and see what. They also have a program where you move electrons around. It's kind of like a game. Everything's gamified now in terms of the study skill, but I think that's more appropriate second semester. And I'm not sure how it works on a computer if you don't have an iPad or an Android tablet. So I've got to figure out with the company exactly what that what that means. I think they sent me an email, hey, what are you going to do? And I haven't gotten a chance to email them back because I'm not quite sure what to say. So three exams, final exam. Um, exams are worth 20% each along with final exams, so that takes you to 80. There's online um, chapter problems are going to be 9%. Graded homework problems will be 9%. You'll also notice there's the College of Arts and Sciences professional development program here. So what we've decided to do in organic is to include the two of the um, professional development requirements for both chemistry and biology, and I'm sure this is for psychology, physics, anybody else who's in here, um, to have an approved resume by the end of the semester and also a cover letter. Why would I? Why would that be important at this point? Um, if you're a sophomore, it would be important because now's, now's as good a time to get a resume ready. We will have a STEM career fair in October where we'll have companies and organizations come in that are specifically um, science and math oriented. Uh, bigger companies, smaller companies. So um, if you have a resume, then you can go talk to them about summer internships. It's always good to have a resume by the end of the year so that then you can start thinking about internships. And you've got the resume and the cover letter ready to go. Plus, at some point, not now, but at some point, the professional development requirements are probably going to be required for each major. They are not right at the moment because they're just starting to take that through the myriad of, well, the nightmare that's the university process for having stuff approved which I was the head of one of those committees one time. Thank God I'm not anymore. Um, so right now it's not required for any of the majors, although it may be for biology. They, they have their own system. But you'll have two of those done at the end of the semester. If you already had a resume last year, then you just have to have, you just have to have updated. Um, next semester it'll be LinkedIn and maybe some interviewing skills. For a chemistry major, that's four of the five required elements. And then you just have two um, optional ones or two electives you can choose from. And the same thing's true, I believe, for biology. We'll have different, we'll have some different um, career oriented events during the fall and into the spring. The career fair is one. Um, there is a alumnus that's coming that just retired from Monsanto who's going to come and visit us, uh, visit the university, and talk about herbicide, fungicide, biocide development, um, which is huge in the agricultural area. And the development of those, of those herbicides 
parallels drug discovery because she worked in the pharma industry for a while. So I may invite her to come into class and tell you about some of the things that she's done. That is people from chemistry, biology, probably computer science, lots of backgrounds go into that type of research. So it'll give you kind of an insight into what, you know, what are we learning this stuff for? Right, I mean, it's more than just a checkbox off your major. All, all the biochemistry or molecular biology that will you, you will learn will be basic organic chemistry on a big molecule. So if we don't have a firm grasp of the organic chemistry, then understanding the biochemistry is really difficult or the molecular biology. So that's why it's that's why it's required for everything. Why organic is required for everything. And it it has an unfair reputation. Like weed class. And I haven't met a doctor who enjoyed organic chemistry. They usually tell me it sucks for me. It's my recent my current doctor said you know, what do you teach? Chemistry. I don't like to go into details. Well, what kind? Organic. Oh, that sucks for you. <laughs> it doesn't suck for me. I mean, then telling me uh, the person she had a date and they only went to class because it looked because he looked like Gabriel Byrne, who isn't David Byrne of the Talking Heads, but I, Gabriel Byrne is like, you know, one of these movies that had Kevin Spacey in it that we're not allowed to talk about anymore. So I don't know. That's why she, we still have that conversation every time I go and talk to her. She wants to know what the latest is in organic chemistry, but you hated it. So it's, it, it won't have, hopefully it won't have that hatred. Or the parent who asked me over the summertime, what are your weed classes? Because we've heard it's organic at a lot of schools. Number one, I am not the gatekeeper to wherever you want to go. I do not view myself that way. So it is not my job to keep people from their profession, right? It is my job to help you learn to the best of your ability. And I need help in that. So you give me your help, I will do whatever I can. Okay, then the rest of this boilerplate stuff. Um, if we had an evacuation, we would, I would ask you to go to the Griselli Library and then I can make sure everybody got out okay. And then we go from there. If we had something where there was, where we should be kind of locked down, I'll tell you this, the, the doors have a button on them that once you push them, they automatically go into lockdown mode. They also can do that remotely by Wi-Fi. And I, we would probably go somewhere in the corner there so that you couldn't peer in and see us. Although there's, you know, there's a lot of counter countermeasures you could take if somebody tried to get in beating you know throwing books at them and whatever whatever's available but that don't do that to lock your professor out of class but if you're wondering do we have those do we have that capability here we do and we know about it so if that was to ever happen that's the first thing would be we'd lock we'd lock that and take care of it from there and then then it just depends on what kind of scenario you want to play out in your head. And sadly, I probably have played a few out in my head. So um, so that pretty much is how we're going to conduct the class. Okay. Are there any questions? So by Friday then, please try and get the top hat. If there's a delay, just let me know because then I won't expect to see you doing problems. As you're doing the problems, you can, a couple people or all of you send me, you know, a test message to say, hey, this is a test message for Piazza, and hopefully I will be able to find out where that is, where I'm getting them. If you have a question, shoot that my way. If I can find the other messages, I'll find that one. Um, if you just, if you don't have a question, or if you don't, you, if you want, you can just write your question on a piece of paper, and then put it up here. So when I come in, there's if there's paper questions here, or be brave and ask in the middle. Of, I will not humiliate anybody. I will go short on the sarcasm. There will be no sarcasm. So, um, and we'll see on we'll see how we're going to work in 
little groups here um, on Friday, but we will be um, going over that material. And then for Monday, it's 1.2.2.F all the way up to 1.2.2.J. So we'll talk about, um, in that case, that's going to be resonance structures. Now, you may have talked about these in high school, or not in high school, in, in general chemistry. I'm, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page, because some professors talk about it, some professors talk about it in more detail. In it, you know, Once every 10 years I teach general chemistry, I always go into it in a lot of detail, because I know that's where I'm starting in organic, but other people don't do that. And we'll look, we're going to look at this not from a general chemistry point of view, but from an organic point of view. So we're going to begin to take that that viewpoint, okay? So that is what we will do on Friday. So if you're having troubles, send me an email, um, and I will try and figure out what I can. But otherwise, if you can read through those, get questions, we'll do problems, we'll answer questions on Friday, and then hopefully that'll be the regular format of the class. Okay, all right. Then if you have questions, I suppose you can ask me on your way out, but otherwise, I will see you on Friday.